Hello everyone! Welcome to the best training you will have and find on how to become a utilization reviewer. My name is Dr. Emma Shapiro and I'm super excited to walk you through what is utilization review for rehab therapists and assistants, how to get a job as a utilization reviewer, uh, the salary, the pros and cons, and how to find that job, what to search on Indeed, and so much more. So let's get started. So the very first thing we want to cover is what is a utilization reviewer? Some of you may already know this and you can fast forward a little bit. Some of you don't. So I'm going to dive into that and the day to day roles and sort of what the day to day looks like as a utilization reviewer, because I really want you to know, is this the right remote healthcare career option for you? OK, so as a therapist or assistant, you are going to be reviewing the document of other healthcare professionals, namely rehabilitation healthcare professionals, you're gonna be reviewing that documentation. You are going to be looking for, is it medically appropriate? You are going to be looking for uh, appropriate billing, appropriate documentation, uh, evidence-based protocols, making sure all of that looks appropriate and good. So then after you're reviewing that, if everything looks appropriate, then you can approve them for reimbursement for their treatment session. Now, if you don't think things look appropriate, then you can deny them or you can discuss it with your team. You're not alone in this process. You don't bear the reimbursement solely on your shoulders. You're part of a team of physicians, nurses, and other staff to help make sure that the sort of the patient is looked comprehensively and made sure that the treatment session is looked at comprehensively. But that's sort of your main duty is, is this documentation appropriate? Is the therapist or assistant doing what's appropriate? Yes or no. Now, what does a day in the life of a utilization reviewer look like? So you'll roll out of bed. <laughs> you'll roll out of bed and you're going to hop onto your computer. And already prepared for you will be a list of about 10 charts, 10 patient cases. And you have about a half hour each, or that's what our mentors say they spend, is about a half hour each on these cases, reviewing the documentation, and then making a decision whether to approve or deny reimbursement. Now, there may be some cases where you may have to call the therapist or the clinic. You may have to speak with your interdisciplinary team. But that's, that's the day in the life. So a lot of it is really computer-based, uh, reviewing documentation, and maybe some reading research, making sure that it's the right evidence-based protocol. And that's, that's it. It's pretty streamlined, right? So let's dive into how much you can earn as a utilization reviewer. So according to salary.com, a utilization reviewer earns between about 70000 to 90000 Now we know that's, uh, that's means and medians, so it all can vary. But you are going to be, top tip here, you're going to be asked in the interview, how much do you want to earn? Now, we typically recommend you say about 75000 And that's because that's nice, safe in that median where we're not going to scare away the hiring manager, but it's a very fair salary. But what's great about Utilization Reviewer is that it's pretty much aligned in salary to what we are getting as clinicians. So you're not going to be losing um, income by going to this remote alternative career, which I think is great. So that goes a little bit into what you can potentially earn in this route. And what's really nice is this is full time, nine to five, fully employed. So there's no 1099. There's no, you know, entrepreneurship or business. You are a full time remote healthcare employee, which I think is amazing. So that's a little bit about the salary. Now let's go into uh, the pros and cons of being a utilization reviewer. And then after that, we'll dive into finding a job and all that good stuff. So there are some pros and cons. So I think the most obvious pro is that the salary is similar, if not sometimes better than what you currently earn as a clinician, which is great because I'm going to tell you, there are very few remote jobs that pay equal to your clinical salary. So often you'll have to take a pay cut. So it's really nice that this is equal, if not more salary. So I think that's great. 
I think the other thing that's a huge pro is that this is a nine to five job. It's a set schedule. Well, sometimes they do have weekend workers and sometimes they do have evening shifts, but it's a set schedule. You know, other jobs like travel recruiting, which is another great remote career option, you know, you may be having to do something at nine o'clock at night, at eight o'clock, all sorts of, you know, times of the day. This is very much you're sitting down eight hours, boom, done. So I like that consistency of schedule. Um, the other thing that's great is that this is remote. You can often work from home. About 90% of the rehab utilization reviewer positions are remote. So you're able to work from home. So I think those are, well, I got one more. So we talked about it's remote, pays great. It's a steady nine to five. I think the other thing is that you can still use your clinical skills, which is great because I think it's frustrating having to leave patient care if you're burnt out and totally abandon your clinical skills. And then I think the other nice thing is that, you know, if you're tired of, of the physical labor, this is not physical. And so if you have pain, if you have arthritis, if you have injuries and you can't perform your duty safely anymore, this is a great transition. Okay, so now let's dive into the cons. I think probably the biggest con is that you don't get the reward of seeing your patient. You know, I, I, I get a lot of reward from seeing someone go from a wheelchair to walking. You're not getting that here, um, but maybe the pros outweighs the cons. You know, you're home, which is great. It's less stressful because it's just one singular thing you have to do. So that's another pro is that it's just one singular thing uh, versus wearing all these hats. And so, um, but you're not going to quite get that patient satisfaction. I think another con is that, you know, maybe frustrating denying reimbursement. We know as therapists or as assistants how hard we work and that it's tough to write a perfect documentation when you've got a busy clinic. And so I think that can be frustrating. But I do want to say that of our mentors, none have said that they've ever been pressured to approve or deny a patient's chart, that it's been solely on them and the team. So if you're fearful of pressure, at least in the companies that we've had our mentors come from, uh, they have not had that pressure. I can't promise you that if you go to certain companies that won't be there, but so far we haven't heard that within our four or five mentors. Um, but I think that could be a potential con. I think the third con is that, you know, it's a little sedentary, maybe a little boring. And so it would be nice to have a little spice of couple patients here and there. Um, but some of us are introverts or extroverted introverts. So having this quieter schedule may be quite nice. So I think that's the pros and cons. Um, so now let's go into how to find these positions and uh, who, you know, oh, wait, I got one more. I'm sorry. Before we dive into that, let's answer, can assistants become utilization reviewers? And the answer is yes. And so can speech therapists. We actually just had uh, one of our speech therapy students become a utilization reviewer. And so, yes, you totally can do this. And I will dive into that with what companies you can get hired from. Now, I do want to say and be fully transparent here that it is harder to find a utilization reviewer job than it is to find a clinic position. And it's just a pure numbers game. You know, there are hundreds of thousands of clinics out there and thus hundreds of thousands of jobs. The number of companies using utilization reviewers is just fewer. Thus, the jobs are gonna be fewer. So it's just a pure fact. Now, the number of companies hiring assistants is even fewer, which means even fewer jobs. So there are jobs out there. We actually have had assistants get hired and we have had many get interviews, but it's just fewer jobs. So it's gonna maybe take you a little bit longer and you're gonna have to be persistent. But know that yes, you can as an assistant and we're gonna dive into those companies that hire assistants in just one second. Okay, so we talked about that. Now let's go into how to find this job. So you can search on Indeed and some of the top search terms I want you to write down is appeals and denials, utilization reviewer, and uh, maybe healthcare reviewer or medical chart reviewer and see what you get from there. Now, um, here's a super secret tip is that don't just look on Indeed. And I, 
this is a super secret tip. This is like one a tip that we use in our course. And it's because utilization reviewer jobs go so quickly. They're in such high demand that companies do not need to put on Indeed. And so they often just put it on their company website. So in addition to Indeed, you know, go on to company websites. We get a lot of people posting in our group, I can't find any jobs. Well, it's because you're not looking in the right spot because they don't often post to Indeed. So that's my super secret tip to you. Okay, so let's dive into what companies hire utilization reviewers. So let me minimize the screen here because I did not memorize the companies because it's just too hard. There's too many. Okay, so first I want you to write this down as assistants. Anthem, my Nexus, and why did it pause? Hello? Oh. Why is it keep? There we go. Oh, good. I thought it was messing up for a minute there. I was a little afraid that it stopped recording. <laughs> okay. Anthem, my Nexus, and New Motion. These are the three companies so far that we found that hire assistance. There may be more. Things are changing all the time. So you can look back here or you can keep doing research uh, because things change uh, depending upon when you're watching this. Now, here's a list of other companies. Bedellis, MedRisk, Navi Health, Corvell, Magellan, MyNexus, Centene, American Specialty Health, Care Centrics, NetSmart, GenX, Anthem, Encompass, Evicor, and Evalent. This is a list of uh, companies that was provided by our mentors. And each day there may be new companies. So I don't want you to think that this is the only list of companies that we have. Each day it's changing. And so uh, that is the list of companies that you can start searching for. Now, really quickly, I hope this tutorial has really helped. I've worked really hard to share as much information as possible. And I think you can see my passion in trying to help therapists uh, get this remote career and become a utilization reviewer. Now, if you are really struggling and if you want more help, we do have a comprehensive course that helps walk you through how to become a utilization reviewer. We have sample resumes, sample cover letters. I walk you through in depth the job search strategies, in depth the um, interview questions. We have a uh, very uh, like we have over four hours of different interviews from therapists turned utilization reviewers talking about um, so many different information that's extremely helpful. We have the exact companies to search. We have certifications that will really help you stand out if you've been struggling. We review your resume as well to help you. But I think the most unique thing that we have is that we also have included in this program two CEUs. We are approved for PT, PTA, and OT, OTA, um, and two CEUs, two hours. And in that, we walk you through Interqual and the CMS guidelines and how to be a utilization reviewer. Not how to become one, but the actual review process and the actual process that you'll be doing once you start your job as a utilization reviewer. We hope that by combining this into this program that you can, out, you can outshine everyone in the interview because you will have this knowledge and you can go in the interview and be like, yes, I know Interqual guidelines. I know the CMS guidelines. I know exactly what to do and can rock it day one. And we think that this is a big help to our students and why our students have been so successful. And so that is our program. And I can just show you all the, all the information here. It's just never ending. We have so much information, so much PDFs, checklists, that I actually consolidated it into a helpful uh, consolidated video right here and checklist. And this way, if you're saying, Emma, this is overwhelming. You have so much information. I've consolidated it so that you are just really optimizing your time so that we can get your resume out there and get your application and get you hired as a utilization reviewer. And you can go, if you're interested, you can go to alternativehealthcarecareers.com slash courses slash become a utilization reviewer. That's how you find this course. I'll also put the link below. 
But this course has, like I said, the two-hour CEU plus the step-by-step -step guide on how to become a job, plus your resumes reviewed. We have support. I work really hard to try to answer our private Facebook group questions quickly, as well as our email questions. We are CEU approved and you get over six hours of content, but I've also streamlined that. And all of this you can watch on demand as needed for life. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. I'd be really happy to help. And I encourage you to check out our course uh, to, to help you get a utilization reviewer position. You can go to, once again, alternativehealthcarecareers.com slash courses slash become a utilization reviewer. Thank you so much. And we have lots of other videos on remote careers. So you can check them out here. And I hope this has really helped you. Thank you so much.